The Brain Injury Guide and Resources is a tool for professionals, community members, and family to understand traumatic brain injury, as well as how to promote better living for those who live with a TBI. In this interview, we will talk with Julie Krug, Clinical Assistant Professor of Occupational Therapy in the MU School of Health Professions, to learn about occupational therapy after a traumatic brain injury. And Julie, thanks a lot for being with us. We appreciate it. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Julie, when does an occupational therapist become involved with a patient following a TBI? Typically, occupational therapy will become involved as soon as somebody is medically stable and able to tolerate um, intervention. And so what would you do with a person uh, at that very early stage? It depends on their level of responsiveness. If an individual at that point was still um, in what we would call a minimally responsive state, we might work primarily on positioning, range of motion, and caregiver training. We may also work at that point on um, fitting for a wheelchair um, so that family members, caregivers can move the individual to different environments for stimulation purposes. Another thing that we might work on with somebody who's minimally responsive is establishing a stimulation program for that individual to um, provide regular stimulation of all of the senses, vision, um, hearing, tactile senses, et cetera, um, to try to awaken the sensory systems. Mm -hmm. If somebody is um, higher functioning than that, we may begin right off the top working on um, those automatic overlearned kinds of activities that we've all been doing since we were very young. So we might work on dressing and hopefully tap into some of those automatic behaviors that were so familiar prior to the accident. Often with those types of activities, we can get more engagement both cognitively and physically um, as a result. What are the goals of occupational therapy? The long-range goals of occupational therapy are to help an individual to become as independent as possible in their meaningful everyday activities. So for some people, that may be basic self-care activities, um, bathing, dressing, grooming, those kinds of things. For other people, it may go beyond that to home management types of activities, work-related activities, even leisure and play kinds of activities. Mm -hmm. So Julie, what is the difference between physical therapy and occupational therapy? Sure. Um, physical therapy is, is primarily focused on mobility, and so anything that interferes with somebody's ability to get from point A to point B is typically um, falls under physical therapy's realm. In occupational therapy, where we certainly look at and consider mobility, we look at that in terms of how does it impede one's ability to participate in their everyday life activities. So we don't solely look at mobility, we look at um, overall motor function, cognition, visual perception, um, <clears throat> and any other type of sensory disturbance that could potentially affect somebody's ability to do their everyday tasks. Mm -hmm. yeah, you talked about how you would help a person at a very early stage, but how does uh, occupational therapy help a person with a TBI uh, beyond that? TBI is a very complex picture, um, especially in occupational therapy because we do look at so many different aspects of a person. So whereas early on we may be looking at more physical maintenance types of things as somebody progresses and continues to improve through um, their recovery, we will work on at varying degrees those cognitive skills and motor skills um, in task specific ways. So we won't just merely do exercise, for example, we might work on it strengthening actually using a functional activity. So for somebody who's perhaps um, independent with their daily living skills but still having difficulty with work-related tasks and so on, we would just advance that treatment to really focus in on the skills that are interfering with return to work successfully. All right, Julie, let's take a look at how you might work with a client. Okay. And joining us now for our demonstration is Evelyn. And Julie, tell us how you would work with Evelyn. Okay. Well, we're assuming at this point that Evelyn is four, perhaps six months after her brain injury. And I would assume up till this point, we probably would have spent considerable time working on positioning, maintaining range of motion, um, initially working on increasing responsiveness, and then perhaps moving into a phase to help her become more independent using um, whatever she possibly can, whatever part of her body she can to work on bathing and dressing and grooming and some of the basic self-care tasks. Typically, four to six months post-injury, an individual may be living in the community in their own home, 
Um, and that's often when we see that, that folks find they have more difficulty than they anticipated. Um, doing cooking activities, cleaning activities, return to work time, types of activities, etc. So the first thing I notice with Evelyn is her posture. I notice that her head is down and her shoulders are a bit forward. And I notice that her arm is, is, um, looks to be fairly tight against her body. Besides just looking at the physical component of that, one thing as an occupational therapist that I'm questioning is her visual and cognitive abilities as well. Sometimes um, postural abnormalities can be related to either cognitive and or visual deficits as well. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is see if I can get Evelyn's attention and, um, and if she can correct her own posture. So, hello Evelyn. How are you today? I'm wondering, can you sit yourself up nice and tall? Good, great job. Can you understand me, Evelyn? My name is Julie. Okay. I want to make sure that you can understand me. Can you go ahead and touch your nose with your left hand? Very good, thank you. And how about touching your right knee with your left hand? Great, thank you. Okay. By asking those questions and having her move, I actually can look at a whole um, grouping of different things. Not only is she understanding me, does she have the motor control to touch her nose with her finger, to touch her knee with her finger, and to discern right and left by touching her right knee versus her left knee. So at this point, I'm feeling relatively confident that she's understanding me pretty well, in spite of the fact of being unable to verbalize um, back with me. Evelyn, I'm wondering if you would be willing to take off that outer shirt for me so I can see how you move. Okay, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and get started and just do it the way that you normally do. So typically, what we see after a brain injury is that individuals will automatically go to using the stronger side of their body for their daily functional tasks. Oftentimes in the rehabilitation setting, acutely after injury, we have to go to a compensatory type of strategy so that the person can become as independent as possible, as quickly as possible, due to short rehabilitation stays. After somebody has um, completed that rehabilitation and has regained independence in their daily activities, our goal is then to help them to learn to use that non-functioning or lesser functioning extremity during their functional daily activities. So here, I'm just taking a look at how Evelyn is moving normally for her at this point. I'm encouraged that Evelyn is actually attempting to use her right hand it doesn't appear that she has good motor control in her right hand at this point. I will evaluate that further. But that she did stick her sleeve in her hand shows me that she has recognition of that side of the, her body and she's aware that her arm is there, which is very positive. I see she has some gross movement of her arm here as she attempts to pull her arm out, which is also very encouraging. That was perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. Can you guess what I'm gonna ask you to do next? I'm gonna ask you to put the shirt back on for me. Is that okay? Okay, I'll have you go ahead and do it how you would normally go, go about the task. What we're seeing here is Evelyn is using a very classic compensatory strategy for an individual who has lesser movement on one side of the body than the other. She took her shirt off of the strong side first, and she's putting it on the weaker side first. That's the easiest way to get a shirt on and off when you only have function in one side of the body. Evelyn, do me a favor this time. When you're pulling your shirt up, will you try to straighten this arm, your right arm out, as far as you can, please? See if you can do it with just your muscles and not by helping with this hand. Can you straighten your arm out? Good, that's great. Go, 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 keep going. Keep going, look at you, Evelyn. All right, and then pull that sleeve up. So this gives me the opportunity to see how much motor control Evelyn has that she doesn't typically use.
from here what I would do is I would take a look overall at Evelyn's movement of the whole right side of her body in terms of how she engages that side of her body and the activity she's having difficulty with. And then we would proceed to engage in treatment that incorporates the right side of her body, working on motor control, coordination, isolating movement, specifically for the task that she's having the most trouble with. Um, additionally, I would keep my eye on her cognitive abilities. If she's having difficulty following directions, etc., we can modify the tasks that we do in therapy accordingly. Um, and if it, if it is determined eventually at some point that she has any other issues with vision, um, sensation, and so on, we can address those in the context of functional activity as well. Can you button your shirt? Can this hand help? I can learn more from watching somebody use their body and use their mind during their everyday life activities than I can from any paper and pencil task. And it's very helpful for us as occupational therapists to use this type of activity both to assess and to treat individuals after brain injury. All right, Julie and Evelyn, thank you very much for that demonstration. And we thank you for watching this interview on Occupational Therapy After TBI, a service of the Brain Injury Guide and Resources.